Fill our hearts with your love and uh, open our hearts, Panginoon, sa pagtanggap po ng yaya. So, mga ito. And uh, fill uh, this place with the Holy Spirit, Panginoon, at ng iyong pag-iingat, Lord God. At mangyari, Lord God, ang iyong palawagan. Lord, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, sa tuwing buwan po ng October, the, the challenge of uh, most preacher is uh, facing yung, ano, yung, uh, yung All Saints Day, yung araw ng mga patay sa Pilipinas. Uh, uh, kasi uh, kung usapin ng patay is a very sensitive and it's a, it's a big issue po sa, sa katuroan ng Diyos. Uh, Maray po siyang usapin at... Uh, isa sa mga dahilan siguro is that ang mga pangako po ng Diyos sa kanyang mga anak ay actually yung totoong blessing is tatanggap mo yan not, not in the life here on earth. So bali sa in the life uh, after. Yeah, di ba? So yung transition doon magmula sa iyong buhay sa lupa doon sa eternity is kailangan mong dumaan sa death. Diba? So medyo masaya na talaga yung issue na yun. And uh, we will not tackle uh, um, uh, deep on that it's because when I prepared the sermon, it became so long so I had to split. But uh, today we will be covering um, something uh, uh, relevant which we are also facing uh, at this time of the year. Uh, mainly yung question na uh, uh, should Christians celebrate Halloween. Yeah. With no direct references to Halloween in the Bible, resolving the debate can be a challenge. Now we will be looking at at least five points sa umagang ito. And uh, please bear with me at uh, let us all be prayerful na yung mga salitang ito ay magkaroon po sa atin ng magandang katuroan at uh, magkaroon po ng kaliwanagan din yung mga ibang issue. So, this is a time of learning and this is a time of blessing mula sa Panginoon. So shall we? We call it All Saints Day. Celebrate life. Parang contrasting ano. Pero later on you will understand bakit ganun yung caption. Bakit celebrate life. Now, I had asked, should Christians celebrate Halloween? Ito yung pangunahing tanong. Di ba? Actually, sa panahong ito, yung pong tatlong araw na yan, Yung end ng October, and then November 1, at yung November 2, may kanya-kanya pong ano yan, kahulugan, especially sa mga katoliko. Uh, the, um, the end of October, which is the, the Hallows, uh, All Hallows Eve, or yung naging Halloween, ay ginagawa sa araw na yun. And then followed by November 1, which is yung All Saints Day. Nang meron yung sumunod, yung All Souls Day na tinatawag sa November 2, di ba? So lahat yan meron pong mga kahulugan or um, importansya especially sa mga uh, katoliko. Lahat po tayo, I think mostly we came from the background of Catholic, di ba? So we are all able to relate to this. At ngayon pong umaga, let's try to get some clarification about these points. Ano po? So, um, I would like to start by uh, discussing the historical background of Halloween. <laughs> the Celts, a people who inhabited extensive regions of Europe and the British Isles, they had a colorful festival at yung po ay tinatawag na Samhain. This is mainly to honor their dead. The Celts believe that on the night of October 31st, 
the spirits of the dead came back to visit their earthly homes. Now, that is to please the spirits of loved ones and to keep the bad spirits away. Ang ginagawa ng mga cells, they are leaving food and sweets outside their home. Diba? Ngayon, it became a tradition that gave way to what is called nowadays as a trick or treating day. Diba? Trick or treats. Nangyayari yan sa October 31st. In which uh, children, they go from house to house asking for candies or sweets. The pagan celebration of the horned god during the 7th century is the practice which contributed to the Halloween ritual. Ngayon, ito, this is another point. Yung sinasabi po nga, yung meron yung image of the horned god na noong napakagulong <laughs> na 7th century, meron pong practice na one or ritual na kung saan, ang kanina pong focus uh, is this, the focus on spirits on this night originates from the superstition that the spirit world is most active in the evening before the All Saints Day. So yung bispiras ng undas, ito di ba? The 31st ng October. Ito yung bispiras ng undas. Ito yung All Hallows Eve. Ang sabi nila, yung the spirit world is actually napaka-active sa gabing ito bago dumating yung, yung undas. Yun ang kanilang uh, paniniwala. Kaya they have so many rituals. <clears throat> this is an image, this is just an image of the one of the pagan rituals. So, if you will see what is beautiful in this, di ba? this is all uh, uh, demonic and satanic and this is a ritual during those times ng mga pagan. Now, when Roman Catholicism came into contact with the Celts, an effort was made to fuse the festival traditions. So, no time na yun, yung Catholic Church, they were so concerned. So, gusto nila ma-fuse yung tradition na nagiging popular. Kaya nila introduce yung, yung November 1 being the All Saints Day. A day to honor the dead. Another name for All Saints Day was All Hallows. All Hallows. And uh, that was October 31st. Kaya ang tawas sa kanya, All Hallows Eve. Walang uh, pinagkaiba, di ba pag Christmas 25. The night before is Christmas Eve. Di ba? So yung, yung um, November 1, if, if that's uh, All Hallows, the night before is All Hallows Eve. Which was later shortened to Halloween. Now, Halloween is a celebration of death and was formed to combat All Saints Day on November 1. But the original belief of the Celts was not lost. So by uh, the late um, fourth century, All Saints Day is a church day celebrated by the Roman Catholic Church and other Western churches on November 1. In Eastern churches, <laughs> or <maybe it's> jacket. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So in Eastern churches, All Saints Day is celebrated on the first Sunday following the, the Pentecost. So nakita niyo na yung, yung relation ng mga times. Kasi yung, yung, yung time ng Pentecost, yung kasi feast ng mga Jews yan, na kung saan na they celebrate yung pagbaba ng Holy Spirit sa mga naiwang disipulo, um, it also, it is a time ng harvest. So, nag-aabot-abot yung mga date. So, dahil uh, yung Samhain happens uh, like, uh, occasion, uh, in occasion sa so end, uh, end ng summer or the harvest time and very close then sa so first week after Pentecost, so naging ganun yung date. In the night before is Hallows Eve. Yung sumunod is yung All Saints Day. So, nakita niyo yung, yung digmaan doon? 
yung digmaan, yung sinasabi nilang yung 31st of October, na very active yung mga spirit world, the following day will be All Saints Day. Pag-alala ng mga yumaong saints. So, All Saints Day is a church day celebrated by the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, it is a celebration of the lives of the saints in which uh, kanilang inirelate din sa resurrection ni Jesus Christ. So, All Saints Day commemorates the lives of past saints including asking for their prayers before God in heaven. Yun ang paniniwala ng mga katoliko. So in the, cent in the 10th century, ito pong si King Edgar of England, he has a, like a testimony wherein he admitted that um, witchcraft at that time became more popular than Christianity. It was then that its followers became known as witches. Witches sa, sa Tagalog. Mangkukula, parang gano'n, di ba? Hindi yung mga gancho, mangkukula, wala. Witches. Uh, while Hallows, All Hallows Eve, originally had been strictly a Christian holiday, the pagan influence from earlier traditions gradually crept in while the Catholic Church influence uh, waned. So nakita niyo yung ganyan pang nangyari. Sinasabi nila, nung time na yon, yung daw popularity or yung influence ng katoliko ay yumihina. Nadaig pa sila nung mga uh, uh, nagpa-practice ng witchcraft. So, nagkaroon ng puwang. Pumasok po talaga naging popular yung Halloween. So, soon, Halloween became a secular observance. And many customs and practices developed and the secular corruption brought about by the Halloween festival. Kaya naging corrupted po yung All Saints Day. Kasi na, parang nangibabaw yung the night before wherein people celebrate Halloween. Sa mga Katoliko po, uh, the Catholic Church uh, recognized at least 10,000 saints sa kanila pong listahan. And uh, the All Saints Day, sa ko kanina, is followed by um, the All Souls Day, uh, which is uh, on November 2. Now, All Souls Day is the day on which Catholics commemorate all those holy souls who have died and are in purgatory. Now, this is a new term, purgatory. Now, for those who have not fully paid the satisfaction due to their transgression, Ito po yung kanilang lugar, ito sinasabi, purgatory. It is not found in the Bible. This is a teaching from the Catholic Church. Now, to summarize, in Catholic theology, purgatory is a place that the Christian's soul goes to after death to be cleansed of the sins that had not been fully satisfied during life. So they can enter into the presence of God in heaven. So yun po ang paniniwala ng katoliko na after death, yun daw mga hindi nakasatisfy ng kanilang, uh, let's say, pagkapatawat ng kasalanan o yung uh, kanilang uh, cleansing, yun ang kanilang ano, parang lounge nila, transition space, uh, bago makapasok sa, sa heaven. Meron ganun, no? parang preparasyon. Parang itong kaikiklense or uh, uh, there is something <laughs> doon ano, ano, ihahanda para maging katanggap-tanggap ka sa pagharap sa Panginoon. But we Christians, we could not confirm this. There is no such thing as purgatory. Now, the 14th uh, century saw the rise and suspicion and occult practices. So, na, ganun na ako, no? So, you can see, ito pong Halloween, All Saints Day, matagal na po ito. We were discussing kanina, nagula pa nung early 4th century, 7th century, 10th century, and then 14th century, nag-i-evolve po siya. May dumadami yung mga uh, suspicion at saka mga occult uh, practices. Sa Pinas, ito po yung typical na scenario kapag All Saints Day. I just pick up two pictures. Uh, medyo malabo po, ano? 
Maybe this scenario sa mga yayamaning cementerio. Medyo maganda, no? May tent. Maayos lahat, ano? Lahat may green. Pero naman sa kanan, ito yung medyo, ano? Uh, <laughs> saan po ito? Manila Cemetery. Yan ang tinan ngayon, yung condotel. Kahit multi-level lang po yan. <laughs> Ayaw ka lang ang elevator. Pero it's crowded. So that's the difference. So this is just a typical scenario of All Saints Day sa Pinas. At uh, ngayon, we discuss about three things. Yung Halloween, yung All Saints Day, at yung All, uh, All Souls Day. Ngay ngayon naman, we would like to see what is the biblical view of All Saints Day. Ano ba ang sinasabi ng Bible tungkol sa All Saints Day? Ating pong tingnan. Uh, All Saints Day was originally set aside to commemorate all those martyrs from the early persecutions whose names were never recorded and thus whose memory was in constant peril of being lost. Pwede silang mabaw na sa limot, yung mga saints noon na nabuhay na hindi naman na-record because there was no record of their names. Di ba? So, patuloy po yung mawawala in, in time. So, over time, this celebration was extended to remember all those who have lived and died in the faith and now rest eternally and triumphantly from their labors. So, kita nyo, no? nag i talaga. Nung una, yung mga martyrs lang na yung, nung panahon ng early church, di ba, duma ng persecution, ang dahil na matay ng mga saints. So, habang dumadaan yung panahon, nagbabago yung, ano, yung, yung definition ng old saints. Di, taka yung inclusion. Merong inclusion. Natagdag na daw lahat yung mga nabuhay at namatay in the faith. At they now rest eternally. Now, we, in our time, we continue this aspect of the celebration when we name those persons who have been particularly important to us and who, having died, now live in the nearer presence of God. And now for God's mighty raising of Jesus Christ from the dead so that we might have hope, not only in the dying, not only in our dying, but also in our living. Amen. Diba? Yun ang, yun ang kaibahan ngayon, ngayon pa na ano to. Uh, yung sinag evolve siya, no? Dati ang sinaselebrate, ang kinag-commemorate lang yung mga saints na naging uh, produkto ng persecution. At uh, later on, nadagdag yung lahat ng mga uh, nabuhay ng mabuti na uh, who has shown faith. At uh, sa ating panahon, nadagdagan na po ulit yung mga nabuhay sa ating time whom we can uh, uh, recall or count names na significant po sa kaharian ng Diyos. Na habang sila nabubuhay, they showed their faith and they served God. For us, we have, um, I think, different experiences. We may have our own uh, uh, saints in our lives, di ba? It can be your, your mentor, your parents, your pastors in your church. It can be your family. It can be anyone important to you na alam mo, he showed allegiance to God and he served God while he was alive and now he is gone. This is the time to remember them. And uh, <clears throat> I cannot deny the fact that I, being a born-again Christian, I also uh, sometimes join my family in going uh, sa cementerio. I don't know with you, but this is my testimony. But later on, we will see ano ba yung ating ginagawa lang at ano yung ating winawaksi. Uh, we, it's a good thing to, mem to remember those who live in faith. There's nothing wrong about that, di ba? But uh, there are some practices that we should not do. And along the discussion, we will find out. Now, um, biblically, the saints who have passed on before us are allied with Christ. As the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 1.21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Next one, Matthew 6.9. However, there is no um, um, biblical command to pray to saints in heaven, 
or ask them to pray for us. Diba? This is the fact. There is no biblical reference that we should pray to saints. We know that the saints are already with Christ. Kasama nila si Cristo. But there is no biblical reference that we pray to kung sino man yung saints na naalala nyo. Saint Paul, Saint John, kung sino man yun, yung mga apostle na nabuhay noon. They are with Christ na gusto mo ng padrino? Like you will pray to Him para ilapit kay Cristo? No. Listen to this. Christians are commanded to pray to our Father in Heaven, which is in Matthew 6.9. Yung pong turo sa atin. Our Father in Heaven. And in John 14, verses 13 to 14, believers pray in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. So ito po yung mga truth and mga basis in the biblical sense. You may go to the cemetery, join your family, but you don't need to pray for the past saints or you need uh, to pray for the dead. No. You pray to our Father in heaven and we pray in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now Hebrews 14, sorry, 4, 14 to 16 says, Teaches, uh, this verse teaches Jesus is our intercessor and our high priest. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every aspect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Okay. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now we draw near to God in prayer directed to Him, not to the saints in heaven. So this is one important thing we must remember. We draw near to God because of our direct prayer to Him, to our Father. Hindi na po kailangan padaanin sa mga saints. We don't believe in that. Now, others would say, sa oras ng kripitan, oh, tawagin mo na yung santo mo. Magdasal ka na sa santo mo. Kung sino man yung padrino mo. Si San Miguel, si San El Diponso, si Santa Maria, si... 10,000 yun, di ba? I don't know. Maybe Santa Claus is also included there. Now, um, the verse from uh, 1 Timothy 2, verse 5 adds, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. Amen? That is from 1 Timothy. Now, you see, because of the unbiblical nature of praying to saints on All Saints Day, many of the Protestant churches that recognize this day define it as a day to remember the saints, excluding prayer to saints from this celebration. So they may focus on Hebrews 11. Let's look at Hebrews 11. Ano pang sinasabi rito? Um, I'll just read from uh, um, Hebrews 11:13. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. So you see, if you in your own, own time, please look at uh, Hebrews 11 because this talks about faith. And in this chapter, it talks about the giants of faith. Yung mga saints na namatay. Um, it talks about Samuel, David, Samson, Gideon, Rahab, Moses, Joseph, Abraham, Noah, Abel, etc. Na sa ating pong panahon, uh, in this age of self-gratification, Kung may kailangan ka, anything, any aspect of your life, you're so demanding. 
Gusto mo nandiyan agad. Masama pa sa meron pa mga servants, di ba? Kung gusto mo nang uh, mabilis na service, nagdi-demand ka agad. Sabi mo, I have the money to pay, so I want the service. Immediately, you want the self-gratification met. So we all want our demands to be delivered at once. We are not patient. There is no waiting. Now, these people, the saints, talk about Hebrews 11, are people who live by faith. Yung promise sa kanila ay hindi nila natanggap habang sila ay nagubuhay pa. But they were good, faithful servants. So you see, yun ang buhay po ng mananampalataya. Your reward, your blessings will not be actually received here on earth. So you have to be patient. You have to be patient. The life of Christians is not always uh, um, uh, full of material blessing. Sometimes meron din. Gawin natin sabihin, wala, no? Uh, sometimes meron din. At, uh, that's why God uses your work, your talents, your energy, di ba? Para mag-generate kayo ng trabaho at income to meet your needs. And if you have extra, to help others, di ba? But um, there are people also na pinagpapala din for some uh, divine purposes, uh, di ba? So, um, these people, these saints, are really patient. They live by faith. They did not live by sight. They live by faith. So um, these giants of pains or saints, um, as I continue in verse 39, these were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. Since God planned something better for us, so that only together with us, would they be made perfect? <laughs> diba? So yung promise ng Panginoon, it is clear to us, nasa Bible yan, kung ano yung naging test sa atin, diba? Kaya lang hindi pa dito. Hindi pa dito. Huwag ka na mangarap dito ng, ng golden na bahay. Okay na yung flat mo. Tapos, kami na, okay na yung quotation niya. <laughs> Maybe yung promise ng yung magandang uh, tira, tirahan is for eternity. Diba that's a good plan? Yung pangmahabaan. Pero here, yung short term, it can be anything because we are nomads. We are moving here and there. And this is, these are all temporary, di ba? And this is all teaching you something. Maybe teaching you to be humble, to be patient, and to be uh, uh, that person who aspires to improve and to improve each day, di ba? So lahat po yun nagkahulugan. Now, in summary, All Saints Day, is based on the historical church calendar, celebrates the saints of the past, and includes prayers to dead saints in heaven. Its inclusion of prayer to the dead is inconsistent with the Bible as we have seen. So those who recognize All Saints Day should do so in only in the sense of recognizing and remembering past saints as Hebrews 11 does, not including the prayers to the dead in any way. The third thing we want to see is that Halloween is practiced today. So we covered two, na po, no? two issues. We, we defined the historical background of Halloween and then we discuss about the biblical uh, 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 view about uh, All Saints Day and Halloween. Now let's see uh, another point. Uh, Halloween is practiced today. Sabi ko nga, uh, Halloween is a pagan, is a satanic celebration. You know, Halloween is the witch's high Sabbath where animal sacrifice along with human is occurring. The witches, they honor their master who is Satan and they offer him sacrifice. Yung mga practices po, like yung trick or treat, jack o lanterns, costumes, masks, Halloween parties, these are all elements of Halloween that we don't uh, encourage you to do. No, this is outside our uh, practice. Yung ano, para maganda, no? yung, uh, kasi, ang improve dyan mga bata, innocent kids, you, you as a parent, you dress your kids, you send them out house to house para mag-collect ng mga candies or sweets sa neighborhood. Di ba? 
Now there is another symbol. Alam niyo po yun yung, yung kalabasa na inukit na may ilo sa loob. This is a uh, jack-o'-lantern. This is, it looks nice. It becomes symbolic also. But actually, in background niyan is not good. Because uh, uh, Stingy Jack, he made a, uh, like an agreement with Satan that he will wander around the world. Daladala niya lang yung lamp na yun. Yung inugit na kalabasa na may ilo sa loob. Yun ang ilo niya. So this is satanic. We don't, we don't condone this. We don't uh, encourage this to be practiced. Uh, in, in our families, in our church, in our school, no. And then the symbols of Halloween includes focus on fear, evil, terror, and death. Kanina, I mentioned about mass. Bakit ba may mass? There was a ritual noong mga uh, sinauna na kung aatake yung evil, para hindi ka maapektuhan o hindi ka madamay, magmask ka rin para maging katulad ka nila. You put on a camouflage. You will look like them because of the mask. That's the purpose of that. So why would you put on masks? To be the same with the devil? No. It's, we don't do this. Yeah. In North American homes, um, I'll just show you some pictures. Uh, you know, because there are many countries practicing uh, 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 Halloween. Like this picture in Mexico. Uh, Mexico is popular for uh, the Halloween. Uh, this is in Guatemala. This is a very colorful event, yung Halloween po sa Guatemala. It's a big feast. Para sa Baguio yung panagbeng. But this is bigger than that. This is in Ireland. Ano niyo po yung kanina yung Samhain, yung the Celtics? They came from Ireland. So the capital of Halloween celebration is in Ireland. Yung mga bansang parang pleasant, wholesome, Canada, they also practice Halloween. So you must be. In fact, yung White House, they decorate nila to celebrate Halloween. Oh, the Aztecs naman. Yung Aztecs is also part of uh, some places in, uh, I think, in Mexico. But then, they celebrate this big time. Talagang pinaghahandaan nila yan. Now, Halloween in the Philippines. <laughs> Now, well, Halloween is practiced in the Philippines, and you are aware of this, right? You are all aware of this. In uh, North America, we still see the creation of pumpkins, witches, skeletons, ghosts, and black cats. Many people still wear costumes and go trick treating or they get together to watch horror movie, Marathon Night. Kasi ang haba nung holiday, di ba? Pagka undas, tatong araw, walang gagawin. Ay, Marathon Night na lang, puro horror movies yung nakalain. So, <clears throat> in Latin American tradition, the ethnic groups of the New World also uh, preserve similar practices of honoring the dead. Among them, the Mexicans, the Aztecs, and the Spaniards. Uh, the Spaniards themselves, when they conquered the Aztecs, they did the same, just like with the Celtics. So they introduced the All Saints Day. Uh, they instituted the celebration of the All Saints Day, during which they presented offerings to the dead on the first and second day of November. Sabi ko nga kanina, sa Pinas, uh, I think many of us can really relate to this because it's, it's a thing among people that sometimes we just tend to go with the flow. Ano ba yung uso? Ano ba yung season? Gusto mo kasama ko dyan. Lalo ngayon, social media, pansin nyo ba? Pag every season, ang daming umuulan na pictures dyan ng mga events, mga happenings nung isang araw, nung anong bumaha sa newsfeed nyo. Halloween, di ba? Halloween. Because we are like this, nakikusa tayo, without understanding ano ba yung ating sinasalihan. Di ba? Without getting understanding of who are getting into. Now, I used to celebrate these rites and preparations as a young kid, 
I remember as a young kid, no, sa probinsya, uh, sa Undas, yung the night before, yung nanay ko maghahanda ng mga kakanin, mga sweets. At uh, uh, yun yung bisperas ng Undas. Uh, para po abangan, kasi sa gabi, nandiyan na yung mga bata. Andiyan na yung tradisyon ng Pilipino. Alam mo yung nangangaluluwa? Alam niya? You can relate? Wherein we teach the kids to go house to house and sing. I, I don't want to say, pero gano'n na yan. <laughs> Nakaaluluwa sila. Sino alam nung kata? <laughs> so, so, busy yung ating mga magulang naghahanda. Ina-anticipate po yung pagdating ng mga bata ng nangaaluluwa. Or, nowadays, kung kaya naman luto na kakalin, just shop for candies or sweets. So, tapos na yun, yung gabi ng ano, ng... Uh, the trick or treats o yung uh, bisperas ng undas come the following day pinasto ha yung November 1 so we all go as a family doon sa cementerio o orderin mo linisin yung punto titurahin yung mixo magdala ng bagong flowers lagyan ng tent magdala ng furniture di ba? may table may chairs kasi yung gano'n ang marahit pagkain magpifis kayo doon yung mga iba naman lasenggo so they will bring and then later on, they will cross problems as in Ontario. So you see, this is the picture in the Philippines. You will bring your bulaklak ng patay. Kasi para iyan-yari doon sa ating mga patay. And sa, sa iba pa po, sa iba, sa ibang tahanan, they would make an altar. May altar. Meron, may saints doon. May, meron kumahin. Tapos may atang. Wala niya atang. Ano ba yung favorite kong matay? Biko. Biko. Ano, may kandila pa. Nakaatang doon. Sabi ko, kung gagalawin niya, sabihin sa'yo, kung mukha niya. Kasi, ano nga nakaatang yun sa, sa ating loved ones. And they were surrounded by candles. You see, this is the set of the Philippines. The movie industry, they encourage people to use their time watching horror movies. This is the time they feature all their big productions, di ba? A lot of horror movies. At mga blockbuster yan. Di ba? Kasi they want to tingle, they want to tickle <laughs> yung mga tao with the scary things. At sa TV, wala kang kawala eh. Ayaw mo mag-sine, pero sa TV, ano nakapalabas? Si Jessica Soho. Si MMK. Naka-feature yung kababalaghan. Kaya gano'n. Kaya gano'n. Kaya gano'n. Kaya gano'n. Kaya gano'n. Yung mga newscasters collecting news everywhere about kababalaghan. Now, this is, this is the fact. Diba? This is the facts in the Philippines. Halloween is being practiced in the Philippines. We cannot deny that. But Christians do not conform to the things that are not uh, in the Bible. Amen. Diba? It's good to, be, to remember Amen. our deaths. It's good to... Uh, recall them and uh, spend time uh, talking about their legacy but wag mo po yung mga ibang bagay na hindi naman isasabi sa, sa Bible now what do we do? ito po yung another challenge what do we do? sabi mo, ikaw magulang ka pero yung anak mo sa 31st ng October will be asked by the school to come in the school with costume at magdala ng sweets Ikaw, magulang ka, anong gagawin mo? O, una, as a parent, let's set an alternative to Halloween, which is, parang ito, Hallelujah Night. This is formed by some Christians. See, ano sabi sabihin ito? No costumes permitted. Tapos, yung ano, it's, it's a night of praise. Hindi siya Halloween, but it's a Hallelujah Night. Amen. Di ba? This is one alternative being responsible parents, this night will glorify the Lord Amen. and not the devil. Amen. Amen. Next. Share with your kids the truth and encourage ay, ito pala. What is this picture? You know the trend nowadays? Kasi yung those who realize, hindi mo makalaan magsuot ng scary things. But you can do something, di ba? Yun ang ngayon ng pad, eh. Uh, you come with costume. Uh, I don't know, costume, costume ni Yaya Dab, costume ng fireman, costume ng sundalo, whatever. 
Pero hindi na yung mga patay. Di ba? Ganun ito, parang fairy tale, no? So, sabi ko nga, share with your kids the truth and encourage them to dress in good costumes, not <coughs> evil ones. And then the third one is be the parent and draw a boundary in love. You know what? Ang masakit po minsan, we as parents, we learn from our kids, not the other way around. The kids should learn from us. When they were young, they don't know about Halloween. But when you, uh, they wake up one day, binila mo sila ng costume, they go to school, nataka sila, ano tong suit ko? Ko anak, this piece is Halloween. <laughs> then it becomes part of their lives, di ba? Because we are not responsible as parents. So be the parent. Be the one who will teach and who will pass on the right things, di ba? But when you do this, sometimes you are caught in a difficult situation. When you do, uh, also this is what we encourage in the church. You do um, a teaching or a rebuke in a lovely, uh, not lovely, in, in a way that uh, is done in love. You, know? you don't condemn the person. You don't uh, tear him apart or tear her apart. But you do this in love, in a way that is uh, productive. You know? And teach, uh, and tuturo na mabuti. Now, what about school's emphasis? You can oppose Halloween as a religious holiday. Satanism is recognized religion today. So, have the school abolish that. Especially in America. They're so open-minded. Okay, that's fine. Wherein, they accept Satanism as a recognized form of religion. Third thing to do is, and this is the most powerful one, you pray. Pray against it and take authority over evil forces. Now, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18 uh, is about the armor of God. At ito yung nameplate or emblem ng ating basketball team, yes. di ba? Yes. The armor of God. I will read for you these verses. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the hand of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the Word of God. Mm. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Diba? Napakagandang ano po, ano? Napakagandang reading from uh, the book of Ephesians. This is uh, telling us to put on the armor of God. Now, Ephesians this may be the last thing we can do. Um, <clears throat> Ephesians 5.11 What is the verse saying? It's a very simple statement. It had nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Diba? Why would you participate? Expose it. Why do you use Eh, kung fruitless deeds naman yun ng devil. No. Sabi rito, you have nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with those things. In fact, you expose them. You reveal them. You rebuke the others who are practicing that. This is our responsible thing to do. Diba? We have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. 
Okay, we're done with that. Last thing. Let's talk about the word saints. Yeah, what makes a saint? I think this is a very important question. Kasi yung subject, All Saints Day. Ano ba yung saints? What are saints? What does the Bible say about Christian saints? Una po. Set apart for God's work. You know, the idea of the word saints is a group of people set apart for the Lord and His kingdom. There are three references referring to good characters of saints. Una po, Romans 6.12. Or sorry, Romans 16.2. That you receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of saints. Second, Ephesians 4.12. For the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. And third, Ephesians 5.3. But immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. <clears throat> Pangalawa po, um, uh, sorry, na, napabili sa ta. Okay, this is an, an important statement. All Christians are considered saints. Amen. This is something that we must be convinced about at this moment. Ano po? And at the same time, we are called to be saints. Therefore, scripturally speaking, the saints are the body of Christ. Amen. The Christians, the church. 1 Corinthians 1, 2 states it clearly, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy. So, Christians are saints by virtue of their connection with Jesus Christ. Christians are called to be saints, to increasingly allow their daily life to more closely match that of our belief, of our God, who is Jesus Christ. This is the biblical description and calling of the saints. The New Testament uses the word saint or saints around 67 times. It comes from the Latin Sanctus. The word is translated is Hagios, which means holy in every instance. In every instance, um, the reference is to all believers. Hindi po siya tumutukoy sa mga particular na grupo ng tao na merong special na abilidad o kakayahan na mas pagaling sa iba para pagsibuyan ng Diyos. And you call them saints? No. The Bible does not say that. <clears throat> uh, never is the word used of a special group of believers who serve God better than others. The scripture is clear that all Christians are saints. Now the biblical view Ah, mabilis po yung ano. Ephesians 4.12 Ayan. Sa ating pong ano, uh, pagbibigay uh, ng ka ka kabuluhan din sa, sa saints, sa ating nakagisnan, the biblical view is much different from the traditional uh, Roman Catholic view of saints. Uh, quite often, we think of saints in the same way uh, we may think of angels or the very least, only the very, very well-known uh, people from the past. For example, uh, uh, Saint Francis or Mother Teresa, because this is how we were taught by the Catholics. Na yun daw ang mga saints, yung mga na define nila, which is I mentioned kanina around ten thousand, diba? In Catholic theology, saints are a special class of believers who have been canonized. Have you heard the word canonized? Now canonization is the process by which the Catholic Church confers sainthood upon a person based on that person's special deeds. It is an honor bestowed posthumously. So, ginagawa ito pagpatayin ng tao. In contrast, the Bible views every Christian as a saint. A saint is simply a follower of Christ. Ephesians 4.12 says, 
Uh, it teaches us that the spiritual gifts are given to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ. So clearly, the saints are ordinary Christians involved in service in the church. They become saints by being born again by the Holy Spirit, who can only, which can only happen through God. So, brothers and sisters, you don't need to be a martyr to be called a saint. Just stand with your calling. Magasher ka, magkabot ka ng tubig sa preacher. Saints ka alone. Christians are called saints because they are called to be set apart from the corruption of the world. Saints were real people. This is a, a, a good thing to, to talk about. They're not perfect. They were not, they were called and holy and dedicated. Mm. They were fishermen, they were farmers, nurses, doctors, teachers, former prostitutes, carpenters, engineers, managers, waitresses, cashiers, housewives, robbers, you name it all. Lahat po yan uh, are considered um, saints. And the person beside you Ano pa rin? Saint Paul, Saint Jojo, Saint John, Saint Carlos, Saint Fernando, Saint Fernando, Saint Ray, Saint Tawin, Saint Jojo, Saint Tawin, Saint Tawin, Saint Tawin, Saint Tawin, Saint so we were saying the saints are real people. They were not infallible and they were on a journey. Like us, we are on a journey. The journey of following Jesus and the journey of learning to be more and more like Him, becoming more and more loving. Less and less judgmental, right? more and more accepting of others, and less and less condemning of others. This is our journey. So as far as the Bible is concerned, our Lord Jesus is perfect. Amen. Amen. But Jesus' people are not perfect. Yeah? That's one thing we should be clarified about. So just think about all the mistakes that have past saints have done. John. James, David, oh, lahat sila, di ba, yung mga pinagdaanan nilang mistakes, they're not perfect. They are saints. They are called to live. Jesus called us to be saints. They were called. They, they went. Actually, yung pong calling ng, uh, ng Panginoon sa atin is mabigat. The calling to the saints is, he is heavy. Ano pong sabi dito? Ayan po, ang dami po. At least siya ang na-define ko rito. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. Bago ko kumante. No, we don't know. Get to everyone. Pass on the empty man. Pass on the empty man. Back from those who take them. Furthermore, <laughs> we would find that we are also called to lend expecting nothing in return. Sometimes we lend and expect something in return. But still, di mo mabalik, di ba? Pero ang turo sa atin is, when you lend, don't expect anything in return. Parang ano na yan? Keep mo na sa kapwa mo na nakakailangan. Treat people the same way that you want to be treated. We are called to be kind and ungrateful and wicked to wicked people. We are called to be compassionate as, as God is compassionate. We are not to judge, nor we are to condemn others. 
Iba bigat ang calling ng Christian, ano? It's it's so hard. Now, church, raise your hand if you lead like that all the time. Yung siyang na points na yun. Wala, no? Nobody can lead in that kind of calling. Nobody. Uh, actually, no one. So, despite of that, Jesus called us saints. Yeah? We cannot do all this calling, but despite of that, we are still called saints. Of course, the word holy does not translate to perfect. Right? The word holy does not mean perfect. The word holy means set apart. Set apart to serve God. So, um, the only way people can be pure and blameless is through the blood of Jesus shed on the cross, covering and washing away the stain of their sins. So we are also to be dedicated. Now, I'm having no more time. There's a lot of things to say, but um, I would like to, to close now at this point with these statements. Um, when all sin and sinners have disappeared forever, the saved living on the restored earth will enjoy God's eternal company. Never again will they experience sin, nor the sin of death, nor even the fear of death, because there will be no more death. Sabi nga sa Biblia, He who believes have everlasting life. And the Savior assures that He who believes has everlasting life. Amen. And so we thank God for those brave men and women down the years who have been faithful unto death in making known the gospel. But we too, Thailand, if we love Jesus and those who belong to the family of God, um, uh, we are called to be faithful to Him in our daily living at school, at home, at work, and draw inspiration from the saints who have gone before us. So in Palayan Purpose now, we commemorate them, we remember them because they are drawing inspiration to us. They may have lived in a different time, but their teaching applies to us. They are inspiration to us. They are saints. Para ano yan eh? Kung meron mang sampung libong saints, Yung mga naunang saints, nandun na. Kasi they already passed away. Kasama na sila ni Christ. They were on a different bus. Tayo yung ating bus, wala pa. Papunta pa lang tayo dun. But we look upon them on what they have done and upon their faithfulness as explained in Hebrews 11. This is all our inspiration. But from those, from those thoughts, we find it worthy to remember uh, all Saints Day, there is some meaning. But the things that are not biblical, get away with those. You don't need to practice them. So, atin narinig kanina, the, the cells, the Aztecs, the Spaniards, the uh, Mexicans, they love their dead. And they wanted to please them with their offerings. In fact, and when I was young, my mother and I, I used to do the same. But we were mistaken. So, from now on, um, and this is my plea to everyone. Um, um, it's October 31 and the following day. Instead of giving offerings to the dead, we can do something so much better. We can celebrate life by offering ourselves to Christ. Amen. Yeah. Who overcame death and offers us eternal life. Yes. So, um, whether you celebrate this uh, with your family or alone or with your friends, know that you, brave men and women, too, are among the saints of God. Those called and commissioned and now sent to be a blessing to the world. Yes. Now, this is your area as a saint. Uh, you are called and uh, let the gospel be known in your area of influence and bear witness to the grace and mercy of God, we know whom Jesus Christ is our chief and our Lord. So, um, church, thank you for your fidelity for this task and calling. Bless you all saints.
Amen. Uh, we are, uh, we are, marami po tayong ano, marami tayong sinaselebrate sa, sa buhay natin, di ba? We're celebrating a lot, but we are here as a Christian, we celebrate our Jesus Lord is alive, not dead. So we are here to praise God. Amen.
Number one, he remembers. We should remember God's love. Number two, Jesus died on the on the cross for us. Number three, there is new covenant where it is fulfilled. It, it, uh, Isaiah 53 verse 5 to 8, sabi po doon, dahil sa kanyang mga suga, tayo yung mga nagsigaling. Pangako po ng Diyos sa atin yan. Kaya yung dugo at saka yung tinapay na nagsisimbolo ng katawa ni Kristo, napakalaga po. Dahil po sa pananampalataya natin sa ating Panginoong Isu Kristo, namatay si Jesus at dahil sa kanyang mga suga, tayo ay nangagsigaling. Kauliulihan po. Kulit na po ito, Brother Jojo. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nakakamil. Praise God. Sabi po ng Thessalonians, sabi po dito ng Thessalonians, kailangan po natin i-commemorate. Okay, balik po tayo. Huwag po sa Thessalonians. Sabi po ng 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to, to 26, sabi po doon, alalahanan yung lagi ito, yung pagkain at pag-inom, pagkain ng tinapay, pag-inom ng katas ng ubas, alalahanan nyo ito hanggang sa si Jesus ay bumalik. There is second coming. Until Jesus Christ, there, there is that out the blessed hope. Are you with me? Amen. So, we are doing this to commemorate that there is blessed hope. Yes. Aside from dito na meron tayo dito sa lupa. Yung parako sa atin, salvation, amen? Hindi mo ba natatanggap yung, yung literally, Yung salvation na sasay na. Pero kailangan mo ng fruit. Kasi kailangan mong mamatay. Sabi nga ni Elder Ronnie, ni Pastor Ronnie kanina, yung pagpasok natin doon sa, sa pangako ng Diyos ng buhay na walang hanggan, kailangan mong dumaan doon sa kamatayan. Are you with me? So tuma kailangan mong dumaan doon sa kamatayan. At bago ka makarating doon, sabi doon, there is blessed hope. Hanggang dumating si Jesus, isa-celebrate natin yung tinatawag na Lord Saffer. Tapos na po. Sabi po ni, sabi po ni Paul, sabi po ni Paul, sa 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, papasahin ko na po ng, sa aking Biblia. Sabi po dito, For I received from the Lord Himself that which I passed on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night in which He was betrayed took a bread hallelujah sabi po doon took a bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in the in do this in remembrance of me in the, in the same way after supper he took a cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as open as you drink, as you drink it in remembrance of me. For every time you, you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming the, de the Lord's death until he comes. So, th so then, whenever eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy, will give the guilt of of sinning, of the body and and blood of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tayo pong lahat ay tumayo at tayo po ay manalangin. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Sabi po ni Brock, ni Sister Tabda, ni Sister Louie kanina, basta kaya ba 10 minutes? Oo, oh, kaya 10 minutes. Hallelujah. Tayo po ay tumayo at tayo po ay manalangin. Sabi po doon, sabi po ni Paul, pagkatapos niyang manalangin at pagpasalamat, i-distribute niyo po yung tinapay. Eh ngayon po, eh distribute na po agad. Pero ganun po man, it's a, it's not a matter. Ang mahalaga po, tayo po ay nagsaselebrate ng ating pong Lord's Supper. Tayo po naman na namin, aming Diyos na makapagyarihan sa lahat. Kinikilala po namin ang yung uh, pag-ibig. Kinikilala po namin na uh, ikaw ay namatay doon sa krus para sa amin, sa, para sa amin Panginoon. Kinikilala po namin na uh, Hallelujah Jesus, yung old covenant ay nawala na at there is new covenant Father God that is promised and which is fulfilled Father kami ay napatawad sa aming mga kasalanan Panginoong Diyos at kinikilala din po namin Panginoon yung blessed hope na iyong pangako Panginoon na hanggang sa ikaw ay dumating ay uh, isa-celebrate po namin ang, ang uh, celebration nito ng Lord's Supper Father God salamat po, salamat sa kapatawaran sa aming nagawang ng mga pagkakasalan kami po ay humihingi rin, hinihingi rin namin sa iyo ng kapatawaran Panginoon 
Kung kami man ay nagkasala sa aming kapwa, Panginoon, kami ay patawarin na aming Diyos. At ikin sa lahat, Panginoon, nagpapasalamat kami, Panginoon, sa iyong pag-ibig na iyong pinakita doon sa krus ng Calvaryo, Father God. Sa iyong karangalan, ikaw ang magbibigyan ng karangalan, Panginoon, at ipaburihan, Panginoon, sa hapon ito, Panginoon, sa aming pagsaselebrate, Lord, sa akin, sa pangalan ng Jesus. Amen. Sabi po doon, pagkatapos na manalangin at pagpasalamat, ay... Sabi po ni Paul, babasahin ko po sa verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Sabay-sabay po natin. In the same way, after supper, He took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. At sabi niya po, sa Pilipinas po, By the blood of Jesus, we are healed. By His wounds, we are healed. By the blood, we are cleansed by the blood of God. This symbolizes as the blood of Jesus and the bread as the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sa Diyos po ang lahat ng nangangalan. Happy All Saints Day po. Especially the 
extravagant gathering. Uh, I will celebrate my father's birthday. Kung buhay pa siya ngayon, 60 years old na siya. I will celebrate my mother's birthday. Kung buhay pa siya ngayon, 70 years old na siya. Hindi na po niya alam yun. They no longer be knowing it. Do it while they're still alive. Just making a phone call, just saying hi to them, just saying I love you to them, considering the stage, that's already a celebration for their part. So, don't don't hide what you have. Give it back. Buhay pa sila, so give it back to, to them. Hindi nyo na po magagawa yun. Kahit na gusto nyo magbalik, even you want to give back to them at this stage in time, you will not be able to do it. It's not too late. Give it back to them. And what also need, we need to understand is in this type of celebration, in this type of events, as what mentions in, in mentioned in Romans 12, 12, we should not conform. That's we need to understand. We should not conform. That's why I don't understand. Okay, you, you, us as parents or even you as youngers, youngsters, you will be able to say, oh, we should not watch this movie, horror movie, na katamad yan. It's bad. You're inculcating. Inculcating fear in your mind. Nakakatakot pa rin. Ibig papanoorin nyo ba? Alam nyo nang nakakatakot yun. Magtatalagpong kayo. Ah, yun na yun na yung part yun. Nakakatakot. For what? For what? You're, you're scaring yourself. And lastly, as what um, really mentioned in or you can say stated in the song earlier, um, My Jesus, My Lord, you're the love of my life. Wherever you go, I want to be by your side. No longer I, but Christ living in me, serving you for your eternity. This is the proof that sana kayo na nabubuhay ngayon, patay na yung dating kayo. You should be this living Christian, living body, as what mentioned in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5.17, the old is gone and the new is come. Earlier, we're all the time saying that, yeah, this is a process. Uh, it's, it's, I'm being reformed, I'm being rehabilitated, binabago ako ng Panginoon. No, I'm understanding now, I'm, I'm educating myself. No, when you accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's already a new life. A new beginning. Amen. Hindi na siya process. New life. It's a new covenant, a new perspective, a new body, a new church. Kahit na may tatu ka pa sa katawan, kahit ano ba pinagagawa mo sa katawan mo, iba na ngayon. Yes, nandiyan pa rin yan, physically. But what's important to the Lord, it's what is inside. Magaganda mga guwapo kayo bilang isang Kristiyano. Amen? Amen. Amen. Patuloy na mababago yan kapag binago natin ang ating buhay paglapit sa Kanya. So with that, I would like to request everyone to, to stand. And let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your guidance, the Lord. We thank you for your word for today that you should be shared to us. Fully understanding what is Halloween all about. In summary, what we need to practice and what we don't need to practice. Okay? Thank you for the worship service that you have given into grace into us from our churches, from Achman, from Sharjah, especially here in Dubai. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for always being in our midst. Thank you for the happy fellowship. Thank you for the wonderful blessings. Thank you for the guidance that you have bestowed to our elders, to our pastors. Amen. Thank you for the life of Pastor Roni, for giving him the time, for giving him the, the knowledge, for giving him the strength to study all of this to be shared to the brethren and to the brothers and sisters here at the Church of God. And we thank you also for the life of Pastor Dennis for giving us a sharing of how we should be approaching you as we commemorate Amen, Father. your suffering, O oh God. As what we mentioned earlier, when you died in the cross, when we became Christian, we died as well with you, O oh God. 
this body that is in us with us right now may be old, but we have a new life in you, a new beginning, a new creation, and with a new perspective in life. Yes. We thank you, Jesus. We give you back all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's all raise our hand for our benediction. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore, all children of Christ, we say, Amen. Amen. Amen.